Justice for all. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. Gentlemen, any additions or deletions agenda? I think we got a full enough one, sir. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve minutes from last public business meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Moving to our presentations tonight, item number one, the commissioners are very pleased to welcome Mr. Melvin Leroy Bucky Shriver, Jr. He's an Allegheny County native who's been called a walking baseball encyclopedia. He's worked diligently on the Lefty Grove project in the town of Lona County. So first, we're, we have a short video about the Lefty Grove project, and so we're going to catch the lights and check that out. Lefty was possibly the greatest pitcher in baseball history, and to have something like this in uh, a remote area like Lona Coning, it's just a good, really good thing for such a small town like this. I must have talked to at least 20, 25 people that he signed baseballs for, and I know he supported youth baseball in this area, and uh, he donated the very first American League uh, MVP trophy that was ever awarded by the Baseball Writers of Association of America to his hometown, which is still here in Lona County. The statue is going to be a great thing for Lona Coning and I think for just baseball fans in general because people want some place to go where they can see these things without having to travel all the way to Cooperstown. There's a lot of things like the MVP trophy and a lot of lefties memorabilia and stuff that only exist in Lona County. Please join us. This is an official citation from Allegheny County government that reads, whereas Melvin Leroy Bucky Shriver has passionately pursued the remembrance and memorialization of the <coughs> native and nationally revered baseball player Lefty Grove. Because of Bucky Shriver's vision and his leadership, the Board of County Commissioners annually commemorates the first day of Major League Baseball season as Lefty Grove Day in Allegheny County. The Lefty Grove Memorial Committee was established on April 1, 2015, with Maryland Comptroller Peter Francho serving as its honorary chairman. Now, the larger-than-life statue of Lefty Grove has been erected in Lona County. The town is awaiting the completion of the Lefty Grove Park. Whereas Bucky Shriver has dedicated his life to civic volunteer work to highlight the life of Lefty Grove and other meaningful projects to include the memorialization of the B-52 bomber crash in 1964 and a statue recognizing the mining heritage of Allegheny County. Therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners of Allegheny County, take great pleasure and wish to highly commend Mr. Le Melvin Leroy Shriver, Jr., and proclaim the opening day of 2018 professional baseball season, 
Thursday, March 29th is Bucky Shriver Day in Allegheny County. That's signed all three commissioners, Creed, Brody, Bill Valentine, Jake Shade. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. I think when you get back, we're going to get another surprise here that Jake's going to say in just a second. So. There we go. But first, we got to unveil this photo. Oh, not for you, sir. No, not for you, sir. I'll be very brief since we got so many items on the agenda here, but I want to thank everybody with the county commissioner's <laughs> office for doing this. This is much more than I ever, I ever expected. And uh, obviously things like this uh, don't happen because of one person. I mean, unless you have broad public support, especially among people that have the financial means to make this happen, then it doesn't happen. And thankfully we had a lot more support from people from one coast to the other for this project. And um, we think we're about 70% of the way along with the funding and the park, but um, we'll know pretty soon because the engineering uh, study is almost done and then we'll put it out for bid and we'll know for sure where we are. But we think we're, we're about three quarters of the way uh, along. So uh, we still need a little help, we're not there yet. So if anybody would want to donate for every $25, you donate, you get a licensed uh, Lefty Grove uh, baseball card and a certificate of uh, authenticity signed by Lefty's family. So thanks very much. Great. Well, well, sir, we'd like to help kick that off, if you don't mind, out of our Community Enhancement Fund. The commissioners would like to donate $1,000 wow, towards great. getting this finished, so maybe we can get us a, uh, a card to put there on the wall next to your picture then, sir. Pardon me? Then maybe we can get a card to put there on the wall next to your picture where you two will be in this Absolutely. meeting room forever. So. There we go. We'll, we'll make that item 1A. Is there a motion to give $1,000 to the Lefty Grove Park? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Bucky. Thank, Thank you. you. Very good. Okay. Moving on. Item number two, we have Allegheny County Day of Civility Proclamation. Leadership Allegheny, thanks for joining us. Thank you for coming out tonight. I, I think we have some Lefty Grove fans held captive, which is great. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have some good information to give to you. Um, so choosing civil Choose Civility is an ongoing community-wide initiative to position Allegheny County as a model of civility. The Choose Civility project intends to enhance respect, empathy, consideration, and tolerance in our community. We invite all within our community, as well as other communities around the region, to participate. Choose Civility programs are based on a book by P.M. Forney, Choosing Civility, The 25 Rules of Considerate Conduct. This book spurred a nationwide grassroots movement, Choosing Civility. It started in Allegheny County. The seed was actually planted at the Women's Action Coalition in the face-to-face -face communications action group and um, by way of local librarian Renee Mason. To, they work on bridging the divide that exists among people through civil discourse. The group then approached the local library and worked with them to bring the program to Allegheny County. Allegheny County Library System then recruited the current leadership Allegheny Class 2018 to assist in building a solid foundation and kick off the program here in Allegheny County. 
and I am Penny Walker, a member of Leadership Allegheny 2018, and some of my classmates are back here, um, along with Liz Logston, representing the class tonight. The kickoff event was held in February, and the Day of Civility in Allegheny County is going to be held on April 12th. We are only the second county in Maryland to successfully get the program off the ground. The events so far under the umbrella have been well received and well attended, and it is successfully on its way in Allegheny County. So we're very proud that we're only the second county in Maryland to do that. Um, choose, choose Civility Allegheny can be found on Facebook, um, and Liz will explain more about community partnerships and the Day of Civility, so if you want any additional information, um, you can join the, the Facebook page and also contact the local library for more information. And I will turn this over to Liz. Thank you, Penny. Um, now that you're aware of what True Civility is and what it can do, what are the next steps? Leadership Allegheny 2018 endorses that we promote a civil engagement in all facets of our community and a perfect venue to do this is to have a day of civility, which is April the 12th, as Penny mentioned. We have challenged um, local business organizations to participate in an event at their location or attend one that uh, will be countywide. Businesses could choose to do a project within their employee population, such as a canned food drive, or they could attend one of the venues that uh, will be conducted on April the 12th. We have uh, uh, many events, um, so many that I couldn't mention uh, them all tonight, but some of them will be a teach-in at the Allegheny College of Maryland, a book dis discussion of Forney's Choosing Civility, that's at Frostburg State University. Again, I mentioned canned food drives, book drives, any type of event that could help our community um, become better. We also have a kindness rock. Kindness Rocks at South Cumberland uh, Library. Allegheny County Government will have a voter registration over at, at the Allegheny College. And we will also have an opening ceremony, which you would all attend, and it will be at uh, Frostburg State University at the Lane Center. Again, you can go to social media or call the library to get uh, full details on that. Um, this proclamation will help the community make a difference on April the 12th, and hopefully as our community needs it throughout the year. Thank you. Great. Please come on up for a proclamation. The whole class, come on. You're not a good person to do that. You must speak it. Okay, one, two, three. Got it. All right. Thank you. This is an official citation that reads Whereas the True Civility Initiative was started in Allegheny County in July 2017 by the Allegheny County Library System to promote civil conversations and kindness towards others. This initiative was selected by Leadership Allegheny, class of 18 as the organization's class project to bring awareness to the effort. We, the Board of Commissioners of Allegheny County, wish to encourage all citizens to embrace the principles of civility, respect, compassion, and empathy in their everyday lives. Therefore, we proclaim April 12, 2018, World Civility Day, to be Allegheny County Day of Civility. That signed this 22nd day of March, 2018, Creed Brody, Bill Valentine, Jake Shade. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 And we need to add that, that Bucky joins. This is quite a lineup we have over there. U.S. Senator Jay Glenn Bell, Lefty Grove, Bobby Robertson, Leo Mazzoni, and Sam Perlazzo. So You're in good company, sir. You are. You certainly are. So if anyone wants to leave, this is your chance. If anyone's ready to leave early, this is your chance. Okay. Next we have Mr. Mike Fiscus with the robotics presentation. Welcome. See this thing work. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Thank you again for giving us some time this evening. Um, we are uh, React. We React stands for Robotics Engineering in Allegheny County Together. Basically, together, what we've done so far is uh, we created this organization this summer. And so far we've raised on average about $1,000 a month towards robotics and engineering in Allegheny County. Um, with our students, we work with all students in Allegheny County, public schools, private schools, and homeschool students. Our goal is to try to build the 21st century workforce so that we can bring and draw companies to Allegheny County. We want these companies not only to come here because we're building this workforce, but also because we're creating a culture for robotics and engineering that those companies that are going to be coming, that they want their students to be able to, and their kids and their families, to be able to participate in. We want robotics and engineering to be as much of a culture in Allegheny County as football and other sports. So that when families come here, they have STEM activities and science and engineering that those, they want their kids to participate in. And um, my name is Melissa Kay. This is Jessica Mellon and Mike Fiscus. I'm going to hand it over to Jessica. She's going to talk about all the cool things that we've done so far. Hello. Um, robotics existed in Allegheny County prior to REACT. Uh, there have been homeschool teams, school-based teams, and 4-H programs participating in robotics here since about 2012. But it was our goal with REACT to bring the parties together to increase our presence and effectiveness. In 2016, prior to REACT's inception, Allegheny County had four teams competing in first robotics competitions. In our first year, last year, 2017, REACT raised funds, held two coaches clinics, three community nights, and two robotics camps that supported the creation of eight new teams. That growth tripled our county's competitive robotics presence. In fact, Allegheny County sent so many teams to the first LEGO League competition in Garrett County this past December that there are plans to move 2018's qualifier to Frostburg State here in Allegheny County to accommodate the increased number of teams. We plan on continued growth in 2018. This summer, for the first time ever, we'll need to hold a local 4-H robotics qualifier at our county fair, which will bring an entirely new demographic to our exhibit halls. Other goals for this year include adding teams to the Western Port, Lonaconi, Frostburg, and Cressup Town communities, adding high school teams at Fort Hill and Bishop Walsh, hosting more robotics education programs, and hosting an advanced robotics camp as well as our introductory camp. So we're asking for your help to achieve these ambitious goals. We need ongoing financial support of our programs and also assistance in acquiring and maintaining a robotics facility. Garrett County is our model for this collaboration. The Garrett County Commissioners used a grant from the Appalachian Regional Commission um, to acquire a 5,000 square foot industrial park building for use by GEARS, the robotics education nonprofit in Garrett County. GEARS volunteers use this dedicated space to teach students robotics and to share their accomplishments with the community. With consistent support from their local government, GEARS has built a strong culture of achievement and they've, they have students going to the world competition every year. 
When they're finished with their education, these Garrett County students can find employment right in their community at companies that also sponsor the robotics education programs, companies like Pillar and Phoenix in Accident. Today, REACT is asking for your help to provide Allegheny County children with world-class robotics education programs and facilities so that we can ultimately improve our workforce and attract more businesses to the area, companies that will provide high-paying jobs. This young man, Adrian, is going, he has plans to study engineering and management in college, and his robotics experience um, have played a big role in shaping his future goals. He's here to give you a brief demonstration of his robot and to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much for your time and attention to this presentation. Great. Thank you. Hi there, as Mike just previously noted, my name is Adrian Gibbons, and yes, I am studying uh, to, I'm an early college student, I'm actually homeschooled in early college, and I'm studying to go to a four-year university and then on to grad school, where I can be competent in business and engineering, um, most particularly management. Um, I realize I don't want to take up all your time, so I maybe a little bit afterwards, I've got a robot down there, and I can show you some demonstrations. I've got the uh, processor and communications relay we use out of smartphones in our competitions ready to go, but... Um, Why don't you fire wait. it up now? Oh, it's all ready to fire it up. All right. Right. If I, I'd run it right now if I wasn't afraid of knocking out the uh, AV signal. No, that'll, that'll be fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Take him out any time you want to. Even better. <laughs> Won't yeah. it be fine? Thank you. It might be a bit loud, though. Okay. Cover your ears. Oh, you won't oh, thank you. I'm not going to hit anyone's chair, am I? Looks like you're good. There we go. Um, if you notice, um, out, you right. can't see it from where I am, but how the robot drives isn't necessarily like you might okay. drive an RC car. Um, it actually uses a gyroscope and tries to drive an orientation to the driver. So I'm pushing in a certain direction. If I change it, it tries to adjust its path to most effectively carry out the measure. This vector-based programming, and I'm going to try not to nerd out too much on you guys, is very effective. Um, especially, no, no, okay. Especially when we're trying to <laughs> score it in the competition that this guy was originally designed to compete in. Um, but yeah, it's a really great program to be a part of. I was part of Garrett County's operations for three years, and pretty much my my parents and one other family were the only ones willing to drive out there on a frequent basis. So I met up with React, the incredible folks right behind me, and we worked on trying to get these resources available where kids in Allegheny County have the same access to these programs as kids in Garrett County. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, it's a really great program to be a part of. It's helped me a whole lot in college interviews, being able to say, I've been part of FIRST, I've been able to interact with mentors like Rich Bender and Phil Malone, and then go on to be able to start expanding access to these programs, and it really ca captures FIRST ideals to be able to be part of. If you look at the proposal sanded there, um, I wrote the original draft of what you see, but it's overall a group effort um, that we were handing in. So. Great. Um, I don't want to take too much any more of your time. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for inviting us out here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all for coming. We, we, we. we will certainly review this and see how we can help. Okay. Because this is great. All right. Thank you. Now this would be the time to leave. See people leaving. Now <laughs> is your last chance. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. Alrighty. Maybe we can get them to ride out on the uh, robot. Yeah. <laughs> Moving to our action agenda, item number four is the Allegheny County Commissioner's Fellowship Program. Mr. Butler. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, I will keep this brief. Uh, this is a project that we're asking uh, for your approval this evening, the uh, creation of the Allegheny County Commissioner's Fellowship. Uh, as, the, as you all know, uh, I started my career in government, uh, so did uh, the Commission President uh, Shade. Uh, started his career in government uh, as interns. And so one of the things that uh, 
I particularly wanted to do and work with staff uh, most recently is to really kind of look at how we can utilize that powerful on-the-job training uh, in Allegheny County. So quite frankly, uh, three, three main goals, to provide an opportunity for youth, to provide a talent pipeline into good paying jobs, and then to invest in our, in our future of our communities. Uh, almost a theme of what we've heard tonight, uh, particularly from the last presentation. Uh, the U.S. Chamber Foundation study uh, had found that 54% of bachelor's, bachelor degree holders aged 25 and under were either un unemployed or underemployed. 40% of U.S. employers also struggled to fill more than 5 million jo open jobs. 6 million young adults are either working or, or neither working or in school. This is what is also known as opportunity youth. According to the Governor's Office of Children, about 15% of uh, Allegheny County's youth between 16 and 24 are that opportunity youth. 60% nationally are, uh, of paid interns do end up turning that opportunity into a job offer. Uh, these interns, according to the Fortune 500 companies that were, uh, that were sur recently surveyed, say that, the, that youth employment creates a pipeline of the next generation of talent. They fill critical skills gaps and they increase workforce diversity as well as spur innovation. So that leads to the matter at hand. Uh, I am uh, requesting that the commissioners uh, approve tonight the creation of this program. It is a partnership uh, with Frostburg State University and Allegheny College of Maryland. And with us in the audience tonight uh, is Tim McGrath. Uh, he is a, uh, a professor at uh, of political science here at Frostburg State. And uh, Brandon Hoover, who is also with us uh, from Allegheny College of Maryland. I asked those two gentlemen if they uh, were so inclined to say a few words here in a second. Uh, this is modeled after the Governor's Summer Internship Program. It's for rising juniors and seniors in, uh, in this summer of participation, which hopefully will be this year, uh, in this summer, uh, at least, or at least 30 hours uh, of, um, if you are an a ACM student, uh, overall GPA of 2.7 or above, and available between uh, May 29th and, um, and August the 10th. Uh, bottom line, the fellow uh, that would come and spend some time with us uh, would receive a $2,000 stipend for their participation. They receive on-the-job training, uh, and they work on a capstone project, which will ultimately be presented to you all for uh, during a public hearing. Uh, and the county potentially receives the next great county employee. And so with that, unless uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. McGrath, Mr. Hoover. Thank you, Thank you Brandon. Uh, my name is Tim McGrath. It's good to see you guys. Um, my my uh, the previous hat I used to wear in here. How are you? Good to see you. Um, I worked for 25 years for Congress, and for 11 years I represented U.S. Senator Paul Sarbanes. And I never would have gotten the opportunity to work for Congress had I um, not seen Washington firsthand when I was a page, when I was 15. It kind of opened my eyes, opened my parameters in terms of of uh, the opportunities that might lay on Capitol Hill, and I took advantage of that after I graduated from high school. Now, um, I'm also the um, full-time um, instructor at, at Frostburg State University, but I'm also the intern director for Law and Society Political Science majors. I'm also the executive director of the J. Glenn Bell uh, Institute for Public Affairs, and I see Senator Bell's picture on the, on the wall here. And Senator Bell, before he, he uh, died in uh, 2005, he, he left the university quite a bit of money because he understood the importance of public service and to try to cultivate our, our students towards uh, a, maybe a potential career in public service. And I get to uh, see this firsthand um, every semester when I, I see these students when they come in as freshmen. And uh, by their junior or senior year, they start thinking, what am I going to do after I leave this place? You're going to get kicked out. And I tell them that. And they don't want to end up in mama's basement. So, the, the important thing is to get practical experience. And I see these students go down to Annapolis or into Washington, D.C., and come back just transformed. And uh, they see a career, they see a path in front of them. Um, not only that, it's when, I, when I teach, I also teach uh, you know, basic intro to American government. And we have a federalist system. And our federalist system um, is basically you know, a division of power between the national government and states and local governments. And, our local governments are a breeding ground for our, our future leaders. I know uh, Mr. Valentine, at least, is uh, young enough to see a, a future career in uh, Congress, if not in, uh, 
in the presidency and so forth. And uh, these are kind of uh, where, where, where we cultivate our, our, our future leaders. And so it's really important that uh, students get these opportunities, and especially here in our local, gov our local government. One of the sad, sadnesses I have as a parent is to see um, maybe my son uh, not coming back to Allegheny County. Uh, I, I think uh, he's currently at the school at Columbia in New York City. Uh, thanks to the public school systems here in Allegheny and the opportunities through STEM and other opportunities that the teachers here in Allegheny County gave them to them. But um, what I think more than anything is to, th to think that my child will have a job here, where I, a place where I, I know I'm not, never leaving. I, I love this community. I love the county. And I don't want to live anywhere else. And to, and to give our, our, our best and brightest these opportunities in local government means a lot to me. And I know Brandon... Um, I spoke to him on the phone, and the opportunity he got working, I used to see him working for uh, Senator Edwards, among others, um, and, uh, and these opportunities are just in, in, incredible to quantify, but they ultimately lead to, um, as uh, Mr. Butler put up on the screen, potential jobs and opportunities. And I'm just very thankful for the county commissioners to th see, um, see these opportunities for what they are and um, to give some of our best and brightest the opportunity to stay and work here in our county. So thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Brandon Hoover. I'm the Director of Criminal Justice uh, and Assistant Professor of Political Science uh, at Allegheny College. Uh, I'd like to also take the opportunity to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, at Allegheny College, our goal is that every one of our graduates leaves with proficiency in civic and personal responsibility. We try to provide lots of opportunities for our students I'm proud to say one of my students is here tonight uh, watching your meeting as part of his state and local government, uh, one of his projects for the class. Um, this opportunity will greatly help our students, uh, and I'm hoping that it's an ongoing basis, that something that can continue on and on. Uh, and I think it's great for an opportunity in local government. I've always heard all politics are local, and getting the start uh, at local government would be fantastic. And I'm a big believer in this area. I, I'm a Garrett County guy myself, but I'm a big believer in Western Maryland uh, and be happy that my students would have the opportunity to remain in this area and not leave, uh, or if they leave, that, that they come back to this area. So uh, I'd like to thank you. We've already started recruiting students for this opportunity, and it's the most excited I've seen my students on any internship we've heard about. So we hope Great. to send you several names. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Well, I think this is a great opportunity. It really fits in. Years ago, we started the Opportunity Scholarship mm -hmm. to, to help our young people be able to afford education here. We're working with ACM with a number of uh, apprenticeship programs now, and then this uh, just ties in with it. And uh, I've known Tim for quite a few years, back when he worked with the senator, and, and I've uh, been associated with him at Frostburg whenever he has his student uh, government nights and all, so uh, it's great to have Tim be a part of this, too. Great. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Okay, item number five is um, Creebaum Road Bridge and Old Adams Road. It's an MOU with State Highway. Mr. Adam Patterson. When are you going to build us a robot like that? It's beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, I have good news here this evening. Uh, as you are aware, that we had a work session, I believe, in January regarding the Craig Bond Bridge. Paul and I recently met with State Highway. State Highway has come back, and the bridge is currently closed. I know it was considered that it may uh, be reopened, be, be, be reopened as a one-lane bridge. They are going to replace that bridge. It's going to be a two-lane bridge. It's going to be a completely new bridge. Uh, it'll be a bridge that'll be um, under construction, I believe, a, a year from, we're still about a year away from getting ready to have the plans done since they've changed the kind of the scope of the project. So that's kind of outlined in the MOU. Uh, also in the MOU is a, a transfer of Old Adams Road that is out in Orleans. It is a section of county road that leads back to the salt storage facility that is state highway owned. Uh, so it's kind of a swap of a 
Craigbaum Road and Craigbaum Bridge. They will futurely become county after it's replaced, and Old Adams would become the state's roadway. It's all outlined in an MOU. Are there any questions? No, great. A Adam, this is a long time coming. I'd say thank you for, for your work and, and the rest of our public works departments. You know, this has been two years coming, so. State Highway deserves it. Thanks. And I'm quite sure the people in that area are going to be glad that it's going to be a two-way bridge again, too. Agree. Great. Is there a motion? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Okay. Moving on, item number six, it's a, a mitigation contract for the Maryland First Radio System. Mr. DeVore. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, what we have before you tonight for consideration is approval of a contract with Motorola Solutions to allow uh, the final stage, final capital investment into uh, moving the first responder community in Allegheny County over to the statewide radio system, the Maryland First uh, radio system. Uh, this new radio system will provide us access to state-of-the-art technology on a, a digital trunk system. And um, as we proceed down this uh, pathway, it should be noted that um, the, the uh, process by moving over to the Maryland First System represents the single largest capital investment into public safety in Allegheny County. And it is certainly appreciated on behalf of the fire and EMS providers. And I have no doubt that you'll hear the same thing from law enforcement that's out there in the field. Uh, tonight's contract is uh, $436,947, represents the final stage for the connection to the system and system integration. I will point out that as we proceed forward in dis these discussions with Director of Finance, this will be uh, funded through the general fund balance. And um, also I'd like to take an opportunity, we have two representatives from Motorola that have uh, showed up here uh, for support of this and uh, certainly have brought a fresh perspective to our relationship with Motorola and they would be uh, Mitch Nowak and Jeff Ashton who are in the back. So um, we request your uh, Did consideration. They, do you all want to say anything, speak, make comments? I think you can put that screen down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we appreciate the opportunity to continue our partnership. The Maryland First is an amazing network that the state set up, um, allowing true interoperability with more than just agencies within Garrett, but throughout the state. So we're here to support. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. I don't, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Okay. Um, the fire update on this system will be? Pardon? The start update on this system will be? We're looking right now, July, August is the final cutover. We should be testing sometime in June. So we are currently working directly with the state of Maryland. As you know, there's some towers that need to be finished, and that is slowing down some of that process. But we are escalating and expediting as quickly as possible. It, our, our current system is no longer supported as of July 1. Is that correct? Our, our current system is no longer supported when the Maryland first system available through Motorola. Okay. Uh, right now, Motorola... Um, but that plan date is July 1. Yeah, we're, we're still trying to push for a July 1 implementation, okay. but support on our current system doesn't end until uh, we've accepted uh, the Motorola work that's been done here and we're migrated over to the new system. Okay. And, and this 436947 that is the final amount. Is that correct? Uh, that's the final capital investment in this process. Is that correct? It's final capital investment, yes. Okay. For equipment and installation. Okay. And then moving forward, is there is there costs associated with that? Correct. There'll yeah. be maintenance and life cycle services to yeah. keep current. Okay. Do we have an estimate on those? Yeah, we've already reached out and we have proposals. And this is very similar to what uh, we do for our uh, 911 telephone system. It's a piece of critical infrastructure, so we keep it under a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week uh, service contract. Uh, when the 911 system, the price on that, we pay roughly 150000 a year for the 911 phone system. And uh, the way we've structured the service contract here, we get very similar uh, pricing. It runs right around the 150 but we also make uh, an additional investment 
that's going to cover the cost of a potential uh, upgrade in software that the state may be moving toward. Okay, but this extra 436, this is going to get us set up upfront capital. We're good. We're done. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll make the motion. We accept it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to fiscal 1722. It's the Cumberland Area Transportation Improvement Amendment. Mr. Roy Cole. Uh, this is another one of those kind of housekeeping uh, activities that you do uh, acting as the Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, this has to do with uh, the uh, State Highways uh, Route 36 bridge over Jennings Run. Uh, because the, the plan has to be fiscally constrained, uh, <coughs> we end up needing to amend it fairly frequently. And, uh, and all the um, federally funded transportation projects need to be included in this in this particular plan. So uh, now that we've gotten closer to the reality of how much uh, the bridge will cost and how much funding is available, uh, we would uh, uh, like to make the amendment to bring the uh, cost uh, for this project up to 8372000 This is all uh, monies that will be part of state highways uh, budget. It's not really any county involvement at all in terms of finances. Right. Okay. Any discussion? None, sir. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner? S sir, I'm going to stay real quick for the consent agenda, then I got to go because I got another meeting. Okay. Uh, consent agenda. Well, then very quickly, consent agenda item number eight is a hauling contract renewal for the uh, sludge re recycling and refuse. Uh, currently, those hauling contracts are with Advanced Disposal Services for the recycling and, uh, containers and refuse dis uh, disposal boxes and Bernheimer's or Bergmeyer, excuse me, hauling uh, for the sewer sludge containers. Item number nine is a declaration of surplus property of a 1987 GMC uh, distributor uh, that will be surplus and authorized uh, for and advertised for bids sold as is. Any discussion? Good riddance to that. So. <laughs> <laughs> is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor, aye. All right. All right, moving to our public hearing. Sir, I need to run. All so right, Commissioner, thank you. Thank you.